Welcome everybody to the New Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In today's show, I'm really excited. I'm in Northwestern Ontario and I'm gonna be fly fishing for big smallmouth bass and massive northern pike. Scott and Terry are gonna take me out, teach me some of the basics of shallow water fly fishing for these big fish. We're at Merkel's Camp here on Wabagoon Lake. And this is one of my favorite spots, not just because it's a great part of the Northwest, but also because it's very affordable and accessible fly fishing. Stay with us, it's gonna be a great show and you're gonna love it. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish, wow. Oh, baby! Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to NorthwestOntario.com Ontario Tourism Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On this week's show, we travel to Northwestern Ontario to visit Merkel's Camp. This drive-to destination is located just six miles north of the town of Dryden, Ontario. The camp is ideally located on Wabagoon Lake, with the best fishing located no more than just one to three miles from where we launched the boat. The lake boasts incredible smallmouth bass, pike, walleye, and musky fishing. The camp is even open in the wintertime if you like ice fishing and snowmobiling. Joining me today is Merkel's camp owner, Terry Kluge, and outdoor writer, Scott Earl Smith. Both men have many years of experience fishing on Wabagoon Lake, and I look forward to learning a great deal from them. We started the day looking for pike in shallow, weedy bays. This is one of my favorite ways of fly fishing because it's so visual. Oh yeah, there's a fish, oh yes. All right, Scott. All righty. Well, Colin just finished saying there's gotta be a big fish here. Just from all the bait fish we've seen, we've seen a loon working and get them on the reel here. A nice thick fish. Yes, yeah, a thick fish. Uh, I haven't had a good look to see what size it is, but I saw the breadth of its tail. So I'm in. Considering I'm fishing with a 12 weight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you got 30 pound uh, wire leader on there? Yep. And about, what, a five to six foot uh, leader? Yeah, f yeah, exactly. For your, uh, what yeah. is that, 50 pound, 40 pound? It's 40 pound maxima. And that's yeah. just so it can flip out nicely? Yeah, it flip casting. out nicely and gets off snags. Okay, you ready? Bitter and, yep. Right nice, nice fat fish. Oh yeah, very thick, okay. All right, I'm gonna slip the fly out of this, uh, this pike's uh, yap. It looks like you got them right in the corner there. Right in so. the corner of the mouth. A lot of times you get the bigger ones on the corner because they're, the cavity in their mouth is that much bigger. And this fish, I don't know how long he is, but he sure is heavy. And you can imagine a 40 inch fish here in this Wabagoon system. They're, uh, you know, they can push 25 pounds. Now, we got the fly out. Take these jaw spreaders. Yeah, that's a, that's a chunky thickness, fish. Very thick. He's a, he's a 30 inch fish, but he's got some girth to him. I just, uh, oh, he was <laughs> We weren't having any luck, weren't having any luck. And Terry had told us, you know, we got to look on the sonar, look for the, the, the bait fish. Right. And we were working this flat and we found the funnel coming out of basically the nursery up here and this mud line, there's bait fish going in and out, and they're obviously going in and out of the mud line too, yeah. picking them off. Yeah. 
Because that's what you did. You cast it up in the edge, didn't you? Right on the edge of that mud line. And it's coincidentally right where we saw a, a loon working that same edge for, for bait fish. So like Terry always says, you get loons or other predators looking for bait fish. That's where the, the fish are as well. Blue heron yesterday where we caught a, a nice fish. So, huh. Okay, let's get another one. Do another. The pike is a very effective and deadly predator that will eat about anything that moves but lives primarily on the flesh of other fish, including their own species. Pike remain motionless, quite invisible in its normal habitat. The pike will seek out structures such as weeds, submerged tree stumps, or just about anything that will provide an ideal location for staging an ambush attack. Key in on these spots and you'll likely find pike, or even musky if you're lucky. Time. It's crystal clear, but it's got a lot of clay, and it'll get uh, clouded up a little bit here and there. So the fish stay shallow all summer. Like people always say, they want to come in May or June because the fish are shallow. We fish basically six feet on average or less all summer long for walleyes, northerns, muskies, smallmouth, perch, everything right in that area. And <clears throat> you can fish a calm day, windy day, you know, cloudy day, sunny day. It doesn't make a whole lot of difference. The fishing stays pretty steady all summer long. Scott, I think one of the things that's really interesting here is that, you know, people assume that because we're up in northern Ontario and it's in the wilderness that, you know, everywhere you go, you're going to catch fish. And that's not true. You still have to figure out where the fish are and why. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I know you've got a lot more experience at that than I do. Yeah, you're right, Colin. Uh, regardless of uh, how prolific a system is uh, for, for fishing, you still have to find the places where they're concentrated. Fish are, uh, big pike are around river and creek mouths, uh, especially one like this where there's uh, weed cover and uh, rocks. And also never hurts to know a spot where you've caught big fish before. And uh, there's just something about that. You don't know what's on the bottom, but they do and they like it. There we go. Took that streamer just at the edge of this creek. Yeah, it's a decent fish. This streamer I'm using has got some dumbbell eyes on it and uh, lots of flash and it, the floating line, it just really looks good. All right, there he comes. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Hold him like that, just nice and comfortable. Yeah, right through the top lip. I really like how you have these the surgical tubing on these spreaders. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that on my own spreaders. That's a good idea. Oops. There we are. Okay. Nice. Try not to lose your spreaders. <laughs> I'll just set this fish right in here. And uh, revive him. Yeah, that's a nice, uh, whoa, there he goes. Nice pike. Let's try and get one about twice that size. Smallmouth bass fishing is really tremendous here at Wabagoon. And uh, when we fish for a smallmouth, we tend to uh, target the rocky shorelines and outcroppings. We generally use uh, poppers uh, with a wire tippet so that uh, in the event you do hook up with a muskie or, or pike, you've got a, a good chance to land it. The rods you need to bring when you come to Wabagoon, uh, an eight weight, 
and a 10 would be a good uh, balance. Uh, I like to use a 12, but not everybody um, likes casting that heavy equipment. But uh, a 10 weight, you'll, uh, you'll be well suited for a, a big fish like pike and muskie. Eight weight will certainly uh, take care of the smallmouth. And if you do tangle with a pike or a muskie, while you're smallmouth fishing, you've got enough rod to handle it. Merkel's Camp is a drive to wilderness fishing location. They feature large, private, clean, and fully equipped lakeside housekeeping cabins. But if you want to bring your RV or rough it a bit in a tent, Merkel's also has fully serviced campgrounds. Merkel's Camp also offers bed and breakfast for travelers. They have a large dock for your boat, or you can rent one of their 16-foot fishing boats with a 25-horsepower motor. Merkel's Camp has a fishing package that'll fit most budgets. The next morning, Terry and I ventured out for some smallmouth bass action. Wabagoon Lake has an abundance of perfect structure that bass love to live in. Fallen trees, rock ledges, and land points are typical structure for this lake. The strategy we're using today is to move along with the electric trolling motor, casting as close as possible to the structure with our poppers, looking for active fish. Nice strong bass. I love it when you catch them on poppers like this, oh, yeah. throwing it in the shadows. They'll be all along the full shoreline still. Okay. He's not ready to come up yet. Okay. Yeah. Imagine what a 20 incher would be like. Oh, yeah. This is where you want to catch him in here. Yeah. Very nice. Oh, wow. Nice and fat. All right. It's a nice bass. I'm catching them on a popper. That took it out real nice and easy. That's a beautiful fish. 16, 17, 17 inches. 17, okay. 17. I'm gonna get him in here, get him revived. There he goes. So basically what's happening here is that we're picking apart wherever the shadows are. It's steep here going out to 10, 12 feet and the fish are tucked in tight. They're trying to keep out of the sun, keep away from the predators, but they're looking for opportunities, whether it's minnows swimming by or things falling out of the tree. And that could be a beetle, it could be a dragonfly, it could be from a mayfly hatch the night before, or even a frog, which would be the fantasy for these guys. But you've gotta make your casts really tight and, and right in against the banks. It's very much like river fishing for smallmouth. where you've gotta put it in there and you're gonna snag up you're gonna have that big head come up and go and grab that fly, and it's a lot of fun. It's very visual. And what's interesting about this, it's very much like streamer fishing. When you smack a streamer down behind a rock or in front of a rock in a river, and you give it a couple tugs, usually within three or four pops, if there's a fish there, he's gonna take it. Oh. Whoa, baby. So as I was just saying, I made a bad cast and I was trying to reinforce the fact that when you make a bad cast, always follow through and complete the retrieve. Oh, that's good fish. Follow through and, and uh, finish the retrieve. And uh, I'm sure glad I did. I gave this one or two little pops and look at this, another sweet fish. This is another 17, I'd say, 16, 17. Scott just got an 18, and he said he lost a bigger one. Wow, big, nice big, fish. heavy fish. That's a nice fat uh, fish, that one. Yeah, he's very heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> now I'm using an eight weight saltwater series rod, and he's just making this thing work. Look at that. That's How could you not like that's this? That's a big, thick fish. Wow. Oh, spinning the net. That is a, that's actually a lot better than I thought. That's a big Holy fish. Yeah. We gotta weigh that one too. 
Oh, wow. Oh, that's four pounds anyways. Pop it right there in the tongue. I'll just get in there, take that out. Easy peasy. Is that ever sweet? Out right there? 18. 18 yeah, solid yeah. inches, maybe 18 and a half. Oh. Scott, How's that for gratitude? Scott's, Scott's got another one on too. <laughs> and Scott's just around the corner. He's got another fish. And we've got, what, another hour and a half, two hours of light here? Yeah. Wow. He was right in tight, that fish. Oh, there we go. Whoa. That was incredible. Oh, 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 oh. oh, how can anybody not like popper fishing <laughs> for smallmouth? Oh, look at that. And that was so dramatic. You wouldn't want to use anything less than a six weight for sure. <laughs> no, no. These fish are so strong. Okay, oh, he's not ready. He's not ready. Wow. And right where you expect him to be, tucked right in there. We fished a lot of structure, and we're having to do a little prospecting to find them, but they're here. It's and they're there. tight, tight to shore. Very tight, yeah. Oh, there we go, into the net. All right, another small 17 inch fish, probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. 17, 17 and a quarter, and what will this one be? Oh, it's right in the top. I'll just get it out of here. See, the nice thing is I'm ready for the big bass eh, with this measuring stick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 16. 16 and a quarter. 16 and a quarter. Wow. Yep. Look at that. That's that gorgeous. One of the smaller ones. It's yeah. still a lot of fun. Nice and thick. They're starting to fill out. And it's still early. Like they're just spawned out. You start catching those fish in July and August, you're going to get another half a pound on them. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's go release this guy over here in the sun. Next morning, weather conditions had changed, and I was a little concerned that the bite would be off. Terry and Scott assured me that the fish on this lake very seldom go off the bite, and that we would have success. Of course, they were right. That's a big musky. Uh, 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 uh. That's a big musky. Uh, uh. Whoa. Whoa, did he hammer that? Oh, it's a musky. That's a we're looking one. for pike, and we've got a Musky here. Oh, that's a good sized fish too. We get them on the reel. And they got to, oh no! Oh no! No! <laughs> there it is again! It hit it again! Oh, oh, oh. It hit it again. No way. It hit it twice. <gasps> that, was a, that was a 45 inch musky. 45, for sure. Keep and going. then hit it again. He'll, he'll come in again. He won't go too far. Whoa. Don't know what it is. I think it's a little pike. It's a nice slow roll and take of the fish. That's not a bad size. He's not a bad size. And that's what we're looking for this morning. Pike. Oh, ready for him, Tara? Yep. There we go. Oh, very nice fish. Okay. Take those, those are a lot of fun. There we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's right where you said, Terry. In the, in the lily pads. This is what I really like about here is that you can, as a fly fisher, the fish are, oh, that's a nice fish. The fly, the pike and the muskie are all 
oh, all right in shallow. This is three feet of water, and I just lost a muskie over here in the point. The camera wasn't even here, and this guy, I casted these lily pads here. Oh, there he goes. And he uh, just slammed the fly. He came right to the boat. I gave it a twitch. I thought I saw something underneath the fly, and boom. Okay, and I bring him to you. He really took it. Oh, yes. Nice jump. Oh, boy, I love catching pike. Yeah. I'm using a 10 weight rod here, 30 pound wire leader. You got him, you got him. All right, oh, he's, oh, he's coming out. Oh, you got him, all right, good job, Terry. Woo! Oh, look at that. Woo -hoo. That's a beautiful pike, nice, and look how fat and heavy he is. Neat just hammered that fly, he just hoovered it, right at the boat. What are we talking about here? 30. 36 and a half. 36 and a half in like two and a half, three feet of water. That's pretty exciting. Okay, let's get this hook out and let's get him going. Whoa, look at that. All muscle. Okay, there he goes. Wow. Well done, sir. Well that done. was exciting. That's, uh, and I just lost a muskie and they're all here in the same water in six feet or less. I mean, that's fantastic for a fly fisher or a spin fisher. We hope you've enjoyed today's show. We highly recommend that you come to Merkel's camp for your next vacation. For more information on today's show and others in our informative series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to NorthwestOntario.com Ontario Tourism Islander Precision Reels and Orvis Sporting Traditions